Welcome, viewers, to our high voltage discussion on how to wire up an air panel. And we're going to be talking about high voltage. And uh, our high voltage load in a furnace is your heat strip and your blower motor. Got a little squirrel cage with a motor in it. In fact, here's a motor right here. Okay? It goes inside the squirrel cage. In fact, here's the actual squirrel cage and motor. We're going to talk a little bit about this motor and a little bit about the heat strip. When I speak of heat strips, here's one type of heat strip. There are different styles out there. Okay? And the heat strips are fit on you know, this particular furnace that will go up in here like that and be mounted. Normally we call them heater kits that we would purchase along with our furnace. They'll be sold separate. Here's another style of a heat strip. Okay. And what makes heat strips put out good heat is that they resist electricity. Uh, nickel chromium is the material used to make heat strips. And it's a bad conductor of electricity. So because it resists electricity, so and we know if we got electricity, we have heat energy. It gives off heat. A fan motor is made of different windings. And when we say windings, all we're talking about is wires that is wrapped up, wound up. So we call it windings. And they have different resistance that, that create different types of uh, uh, electrical imbalance. Um, and this will create magnetism that will cause the shaft to spin. But just like any winding or wire, if it gets cut, it ain't going to work. If it burns open or it becomes shorted, if the winding breaks loose and touches another wire, because the windings inside a motor is just protected with a little coating on top of a copper wire. And if they overheat or uh, not taken care of properly, well, they can burn through. They, be, they can become grounded or shorted. And uh, maybe in future videos we will talk more about that. But right now we just want to focus on how to wire up our fan and our heat strip. And it's pretty simple. We mentioned earlier in our low voltage video that everything electricity, especially single phase, has two legs of power. Well, here's our main power coming in, okay? And this represents a fuse. Here we have a fuse on our heat strip. And here we have a limit switch. And here's a picture of a limit switch. Got to reconnect onto it. There's different ones with different limits on how high, how hot, hot they get before they open up. Got a little bimetal. Two, people, two pieces of metal that react the heat. So if the fan stops running in our furnace, we don't want electric heat just getting hotter and hotter in our furnace, burning up our wires or perhaps could cause a fire. So we have our limit switches on there. They'll open up, and you notice I got it right here. Power has to come through the limit switch to the heat strip. So even on this heat strip right here that I showed you, we have a limit switch right here. And it going into one leg of the heat strip. So when power comes in here, if it gets the fan don't run and it overheats, this will open up and shut it off. Okay? Some have fusible link, some have both. Now, a fusible link is a fuse that when it melts, you have to replace it. Unlike the limit switch, it'll just reset itself when it cools down. So just keep that in mind when you're troubleshooting the unit and you can't get it to work. Check your limit switches and your uh, fusible links. I have another type of fuse here. Common fuse we see a lot. They come in different sizes. But certainly, this won't be the size that you will see on an heat strip, but you will see uh, maybe something like this on other parts of our circuit in our furnace. Maybe it's controlling the cooling or just controlling the fan. But this is a, a fuse. And so whatever furnace you're working on, see what size fuse you need. 
and they're easy to test if they blow. All they do is run power through them. If they open up, and you know they ain't no good, you have to replace them. A lot of times we need to know why did our fuse blow out. So that's something you have to do book reading. Uh, this going over the furnace ain't going to teach you everything you need to know, but it'll help you understand how to wire them up and what you do. So let's wire up the heat strip. Everything has two legs of power. This is my common leg. This is L2. Both legs are hot. But in this particular example, common always goes to whatever it is, power. So we run common straight to our heat strip. Same thing. And I always like to wire up my common first. After I do my low voltage, I wire up my common on my high voltage. That way I make sure I'm going to have a direct short. And if I run this over here, this is my common on my fan. So now i got a common out of the way. But I'm going to do something. I'm going to erase all of this because I want you to just see high voltage. Hopefully you have the low voltage already drawn from earlier videos. All right, so let's run common here, and let's run common to our fan. Now, electricity, I like to use a little, it's kind of childish, but it's a little rhyme. Power load, power switch load. Everything in electricity operates like that. Power load, power switch load. Give me an example. If you look here at the switch here on the light, the camera this way. We have power going straight to the light, or the neutral leg, one leg. The other leg of power that's going to that light is being controlled by a switch. And if I cut the switch off, the light will go off, and then I cut it on, the light will come on. So that switch gives us the means to control our light. The same thing with the switch on the thermostat. It gives us we can control the sequence and the fan, then we can control the fan and the heat strip. So we have to control the fan relay and the sequencer by means of the switch, which is the thermostat. So that gives us control of these two switches, and these are switches in high voltage. Now, one leg power load, the other leg has to run through a switch. So we run L2 through the sequencer to our heat strip. Now, by means of W for the thermostat, we control the sequencer, which gives us control of the heat strip. One thing controls the next. Same thing with our fan relay. We want to wire our fan up, and keep this in mind, when you wire up the fan, it has more than one speed. Each different, different speeds have to go on a different circuit. High usually goes on normally open, unless you're using a one-speed fan. And you'll usually use high, black, it'll be a black wire, and we can use red for low speed. So most of the time, that's what you'll have in the field. You'll have red for low speed and black for high speed wires coming off your fan motor. And black will normally go on normally open, and red will go on normally closed. And you remember why when we was talking about the fan relay? When we energize the fan relay, this one, normally closed, is going to open, and this is going to close. Normally closed is going to, normally open is going to close. So that's where they can switch. When we de-energize it, this will be normally open, and this will be normally closed. That way our two speeds will not be in the circuit at the same time. And it can happen when you... If you accidentally wire two speeds up on the same circuit and they both come on at the same time, energized, it can, it can cause a fire. And in a mobile home, that's not a pretty picture. So keep that in mind. High speed normally open, low speed normally closed. And they're normally going to be red for low speed, and normally going to be black for high speed. But read the side of your motor. Every motor tells you exactly what's going on, where you're supposed to be wired up to, and then you take that and follow the manufacturer's directions on the unit you're wiring up, and it won't be a problem. And if you get a chance, look at the side of the motor. It has a little box, and it got the, the medium, the high, and the low speed on it. And then it has a box around it. And that box represents the fan relay. 
or it may have something looking like an arrow that is uh, showing that it can be switched to different speeds by means of a fan relay. So that's the important thing of fan relay. A fan relay allows us to switch speeds on our fans for heating and cooling. But you may have uh, one speed, and then, then all you need to do is just energize that fan relay, and the thermostat will do that. Well, let's finish wiring up the fan. When our heat strips come on, we want our fan to come on at low speed at the same time. So always remember, I find a lot of technicians, this is where they mess up. And this is where they'll sometimes wire up two speeds at the same time. But always put, always wire a wire from your sequencer that's, that's energizing your heat strip, have it come to your fan circuit, normally closed circuit. Now if you have more than one heat strip, you can put the fan on by itself, long as it's long as the power that's going to the sequencer for the heat strip, power is going to the sequencer for the fan also. And if you look right here, this is a packaging heat strip with a sequencer with more than one on it. And so this will allow us to operate the fan and the sequencer at the same time, but not on the same circuit. Okay? Like I said, read up on these things, read your books, read up on sequencers, read up on fan relays, and this will just make you understand it even better. But showing you how to wire it up, you wire them together. Okay? Now, if we have a call for cooling or fan on, that's the only time the, the uh, fan relay is energized. When you have a call for cooling or fan on. Or on heat pumps, when it's running in heat mode, the compressing fan, the fan relay is energized. But for electric furnaces, or electric heat, or emergency heat, the fan relay is not energized. And that's because we got it on normally closed position, so it would get its power from L2 through the normally closed to the fan. Because it receives power from the sequencer, not really from the sequencer, but really from L2 going through our sequencer. So here we got power low, power switch low, here we got power low, and then we're going to run power switch low. Now let's get uh, power to our high speed. And notice I ran from this side. I just grabbed it from right here and brought it straight over. Now this is coming straight from the hot wire. But as long as this remains open, it'll never go to the high speed winding on the run while he's on the fan. Okay? So, we got power, low, and then we got power, switch, low. So this is the switch in high voltage. In low voltage, for our fan, the switch is the sequencer, actually, just going through the fan relay. Now, I want you to understand something about the fan real quick. All we're saying about the fan is this. You learn about start, common, and run. Start has bigger windings. Run has smaller windings in the motor. Start and run. Hook up to a capacitor. Now, what we're saying about our low and medium is that a medium, a low, and a high speed all represents the run windings. It's still only two legs in the power. It's common plus one of these. What happens is, by placing the wires on different positions on the windings, determine how fast that motor is going to move. So, right here is what we use our fan relay to control on our run windings, which wire will be energized when. So I hope these points right here help you. If you go over this and play this video over and over, if you practice the drawing and you do some uh, outside reading with it, it will help you to wire up a furnace and understand how the, how the electric furnace, emergency heat, the fan, and so forth work on a furnace.
In future videos, we're going to actually wire up wire for wire on a furnace. And then you can take this and compare it with that.